On the eve of the Second World War, today's Slovenia was a part of fascist Italy and the remaining part was part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. This kingdom got taken down by the Axis powers in April 1941. Then the Slovene lands were partitioned by the Germans and the Italians. Some Slovenes worked together with the occupier, in other words, they collaborated. But what was it like? In this video, you are going to learn about Slovene collaboration during World War II. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I run this YouTube channel, History Hustle, where I make videos about history for you. And if you find that interesting, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell to join the hustle. Let's start. What is now Slovenia used to be part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This empire crumbled towards the end of the First World War. War. After World War I, Italy got a piece of what is now Slovenia. But the majority became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. Later, Kingdom of Yugoslavia. As a province, it was known as Drava Banovina. In 1941, the Axis powers led by Germany invaded Yugoslavia and took down the kingdom within 12 days. When that happened, representatives of the Slovene political parties set up a national council trying to negotiate some special status, like the Croats had achieved, but the Slovenes were not successful. The Axis had other plans. The former province of Yugoslavia was partitioned. A small portion in the northeast was was taken by Hungary, Germany to the north, Italy annexed the southern part, and the west was already part of Italy after 1920. Before diving into Slovene collaboration, we need to take a look at the word collaboration, because it has a very negative connotation. But collaboration was different in the different countries in World War II. Take for example Norway, their collaborators were called Quislings, named after Figun Quisling, he was the head of the puppet Nazi government of German-occupied Norway. He and his henchmen were considered as traitors. In Slovenia, the situation was a bit more complicated, as historian Stefan K. Pavlovich describes. Civil war flared up in the autumn, when both anti-communist defenders of the faith and communist-controlled liberators went out to win the uncommitted center of Slovene opinion or to force it to come out with a clear choice. The Italian southern part of Slovenia had around 350,000 people. Both Italian and Slovenian were used as public language. Slovenian cultural institutions were kept and thus normal cultural life continued. Yet leading fascist Emilio Grazioli strived for Italianizing the Slovenes. The Italians set up the Anti-Communist Volunteer Militia, the MVAC, also known as the White Guard, to combat the partisans. Slovenes were among them, supported by the Catholic Church who was anti-communist and wanted to stop partisan terror. A big part of the MVAC consisted of so-called village guards, self-defense units who battled the partisans. Others were Yugoslav POWs who wanted to join the Axis cause. Mid-1942, the MVAC had between two and 3,000 armed men. One year later, it had over 6,000 men. Within the MVAC developed the Slovene Legion, which was part of the Slovene People's Party, which had strong ties to the Catholic Church. Later, a Slovene Chetnik detachment joined as the Legion of Death. And this basically all shows how fragmented the MVAC actually was. And ironically, you can see that when you look at their uniforms and equipment. It was a hodgepodge of different equipment and weaponry. Some wore civilian clothing, others Italian uniforms and items. Some wore Czech helmets, others wore French World War I helmets and the same goes for weaponry. German controlled Slovenia was intended to be annexed into the German Reich. According to the Nazis, the area had to be Germanized or re-Germanized as it allegedly once had been. Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler was put in charge of a program of ethnic relocation. The region had around 800,000 people and had thereby the largest population. The Germans claimed over 25,000 ethnic Germans, Volksdeutsche, lived in the area. In reality, this was around 10,000. 
What followed were mass deportations and executions of Slovenes as reprisals against partisan attacks. One key figure when looking at Slovene collaboration was the former Yugoslav general, Leo or Leon Rupnik. He was an anti-communist conservative army commander. Under Italian administration, he served as a mayor of Ljubljana but had limited power. After the Italian surrender of 1943, he served under the Germans. Under the Germans, he did not have much freedom of movement either. Rupnik acted on the assumption that the Germans would win the war. His powers and prerogatives were narrowly limited and he served only as a tool of the German occupation authorities. He initiated and helped with the recruitment of the Slovene Home Guard, the Doma Branci. I get to that later. I also wanted to point out the Bishop of Ljubljana, Gregory Rushman. He had a controversial role during World War II. As an anti-communist, he was against the Liberation Front of the Slovene people and collaborated fully with the Germans and the anti-partisan forces. As Italy surrendered in September 1943, the Germans moved in and took over the Italian territories. The Slovene Home Guard was established and many former MVAC fighters joined this formation to combat partisans in the Ljubljana district. The Slovene Home Guard was the beginning of military collaboration between the Slovenes and the Germans. By September 1944, it had around 13,000 men in its ranks. They had to swear a solemn oath to fight against the partisans together with the German police and the SS. Many acted under duress since it would make them suspect in the eyes of the Allies. The Germans, they paid their wages and took care of equipment, weaponry and uniforms. They were first organized in battalions and companies, but later they were regrouped and reorganized. They were commanded by German officers, sometimes by Slovene officers. And although they fought on the side of the Axis, they sometimes helped Allied airmen who were shot down and parachuted in the Slovene territory. Rudolf Hirschegger, a Slovene clericalist who served in both the MVAC and the Home Guards, described how he saved an American pilot whose plane was shot down by the Germans near Ljubljana in November 1944. He evacuated the pilot to a supposedly safe place where another 14 American flyers were hidden by the Home Guards, but they were discovered by the Germans and taken as prisoners of war. The Slovene Home Guard wore both German and Italian uniforms. And then there was also the Black Hand, which was established in 1944 in several cities, who arrested, tortured and killed members of the Liberation Front of the Slovene people. The Germans withdrew from Slovenia in April 1945 and Slovenia was taken over, not by the Western Allies nor the Soviets, but by the Yugoslav partisans. Even after the German unconditional surrender, battles between pro-Axis forces and the partisans took place. The latest one was mid-May 1945, the Battle of Poljane. After the war, many collaborators who fell in partisan hands were killed. Ethnic Germans and Italians were forcefully expelled and sometimes massacred. But that is a story for another time. Big shout out to my patrons. A special thanks to Philip Jordan, Jakob Moslund, Nick Terranova, Haley Berry, Mark Little Hill, Janusz Dojom Kievis, Joan, Justin Trebel, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Ilya Jut, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, and Mike West. If you like to learn more about Slovenia during World War II, click right here. And if you like to learn about other pro access formations, you can click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to share this video with all your friends. See you later.